Good morning and welcome back to Miniature Monday here on Gaming with ADHD, where today we're going to take a look at the Kellhounds Striker Lance for Battletech from Catalyst Game Labs. Now, this is a unique uh, mercenary lance pack that they've been releasing recently and is available exclusively, at least for the time being, through the Catalyst Games web store. So if you do want to purchase this, you will have to go to them directly. Uh, but it is a pack of four figures that includes some re-sculpts, but also one brand new miniature. Now, like with our other uh, miniature review series for Battletech, uh, since some of these are reposes, we're going to look at the original piece of art, and then we're also going to look at the brand new Ill Clan art and just kind of compare them, see how it matches up to the new sculpt that they've got for the miniature. And then for the new miniature, we'll actually look at the history of the art that's been released for it. Now, before we get into it, do make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I do try to put out a few different videos each week covering all sorts of tabletop content, and whether it's board games, role-playing, miniatures, everything in between, uh, I like to cover it on the channel. So I'd love for you to come along and see what we have to share. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into our first figure. Now up first, we've got the Griffin. Now this was originally released as part of the beginner box. The original Griffin miniature uh, has a PPC and an LRM 10 uh, and uh, it was it was a little frustrating to have it just in the beginner box uh, and not available anywhere else. Uh, you know, some mechs have gotten uh, reused quite a number of times, so it's nice to see uh, one of these actually make a uh, a second appearance uh, with a little bit different design. Uh, now, for the original piece of art, now this was one of the unseen. Uh, the Griffin, I uh, forget exactly which anime it came out of, uh, but this was the art from 3025. And so uh, you can see the LRM pack on the shoulder, the energy weapon in the right hand. And again, it's just kind of one of those, uh, especially early 80s giant robot style. You, know, you didn't have as many built-in weapons. Usually they would be holding them like it was a person kind of a thing. So uh, definitely the traditional style. Now this is what we got for the Ill Clan version. So as you can see, it's still maintaining that rather round, uh, I'm going to call it sort of like a, a diving mask style helmet. But again, with the big armor pauldrons on either shoulder. Uh, you can see that originally it was an LRM-10 rack, uh, but as the miniature comes around, the new version of the model actually ends up with an LRM-20 on the shoulder. So uh, I think the miniature, you know, obviously there was a lot of reposing going on, but it's a good little design. Um, it's a mech that, uh, while I am not very good at playing with it, I end up using it quite a bit. The jump jets combined with a PPC and an LRM uh, really make this guy kind of uh, kind of fun to play with, especially when you got two opponents teaming up on you. All right, so that is the Griffin. All right, next up we have the Wolfhound. Now, in this piece of art originally appearing in the Wolf Dragoon supplement, uh, we have the origin of this light mech. Now, it's got a trio of medium lasers in the chest, a large laser in its right arm, and uh, this you know, very distinctive uh, headpiece. Uh, the, I actually prefer the 2C version that does have a bit more of a wolf-looking head to it, uh, but this is the Ill Clan art. So, uh, yeah, overall, I think this, the design has been pretty solid since it was originally released. And especially when we compare it to the miniature that we received, 
this is this is a pretty solid mech. So there's now uh, three versions of the Wolfhound in existence. There was the one that was uh, there's the original release. We have our uh, new alternate pose, and then there's the premium version, which is Phelan Kell's Wolfhound 2C. Uh, the Wolfhound 2C looks very, very similar to this one. The head is very different. Uh, the body is, uh, it's a little uh, thinner in the chest area. Uh, but overall, it's its just a, a nice standard uh, design. Uh, I do like when they are repeating mechs. They're either picking ones that are uh, just classic designs or that are just, you know, nice, easy representations that even if you're not necessarily using the miniature for that particular mech, uh, it's it's easy to substitute it in for something like that. And I think the Wolfhound actually does kind of fit that role, where if you need it to represent something else, um, like a Vindicator or something, you know, you could do it easily, um, even though, the, you know, technically it's a different mech. So, uh, I definitely like this one. It's got a bit more of an action pose as opposed to the art, you know, since it's got its legs splayed out a little bit more. Um, you know, overall, really like this miniature. Um, you know, and it'll definitely be fun to get painted up. All right. Now, third, we've got the Crusader. Now, this was originally an unseen, as we can see here from the 3025 art. And basically, it represents the armored Valkyrie or Veritech from the Macross Robotech cartoon. Uh, basically, if you if you look closely, you can see the Phoenix Hawk or uh, Valkyrie or Wasp underneath this, uh, because it's technically the same robot, just with more uh, armor pieced on. Now, in this particular pack, it represents the jumping mech that they provided. So the jumping mechs, basically, you have a base with a removable exhaust plume that uh, represents the mech taking off and, you know, jumping around the battlefield. Uh, it's completely unnecessary. Uh, you can model it with or without, or you can actually even uh, make it swappable. Some of the swaps work a little bit better than others, uh, because especially if you are going to be painting it, that can cause issues. But overall, I think this is actually probably one of the better jumping mechs that they've done. It's much more dynamically posed. You can see the legs are at uh, at different positions, uh, so it's not uh, it's not a very static jump. It looks. Uh, it, it, it has more of an anime look is what I would say in that it's, uh, you know, anime, anime robots seem to move and act much more, uh, much more like humans. And this particular jumping mech does have a bit more of that. The arms, uh, while positioned similarly, are a little bit off uh, from each other. The legs are off from each other. So it looks like a more natural jump. And, uh, you know, I, I really, really do uh, like this one. But let's uh, take a quick look at the alternate pose. Now, in this case, uh, the exhaust just comes right off. And they actually have an alternate piece. So it's very small. Um, and it... I probably should have experimented with this a little bit before recording the video. Uh, because the the figure or the the alternate piece goes on a specific post. So all right, there we go. And it also goes on in a specific position. So now that I figured it out on uh, on video, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put it on the foot of the figure so that it's in correctly. And you'll see that when we get the close-up put back. Uh, so that it's on correctly. And then use it to position the, uh, the mech 
on the base. So this one, uh, this one I think does work better than the Highlander did. The Highlander, if you remember, had the wrecked urban mech sitting underneath it. Uh, I don't like how the base for the foot does overhang the 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 actual figure base itself. Um, but you know, because those legs are at different positions, they need something to actually balance it and make it look like it's on the ground. So uh, not the most solid, uh, but definitely not the worst that I've seen from some of the jumping mechs. Uh, I do like it. It does look good. Um, you do have a problem where the jump jets on the back do have the holes for the exhaust. So uh, they're a bit more pronounced on this one, but overall, you know, I'm being I'm being really nitpicky on this. Uh, some people are going to be annoyed with it, especially when it comes down to painting. Um, but you know, I'll be honest, you're probably going to end up picking one pose that you like, whether it's the jump jets or without the jump jets, and you're just going to glue it in place and stick to it. Um, at least that's what I will end up doing with it. So that is the crusader um, and we'll let him finish turning around and then we will move in to our final oh actually i should show uh here is our ill clan art i can't believe i forgot that so uh, one thing i didn't like about the art is these lrms in the forearms i think this sculpt actually does do a good job at kind of minimizing those uh, the original Crusader art, the forearms are absolutely massive. It, it just kind of throws it off for me. It's not my favorite, but I think this miniature seems to shrink them down a little bit uh, so that they're not as pronounced, and I actually much, much prefer that for this particular mic. All right, so now that we've done that, let's move into our last one. All right, and our last mech is the Night Sky. Now, this is a brawler mech. It's full of energy weapons, so no ammo to worry about, and a giant forearm hatchet. Uh, as you can see from this particular piece of art, uh, Sarna says that this is originally from 3055. Uh, unfortunately, my tech readout is buried at the moment, but I don't remember this one. Uh, especially um, it only being uh, originally in the uh, in the colorized art. So that is a little bit different for me. For some reason, my memory is failing me. Um, but it also kind of has that 80s look, uh, a little bit more cartoonish, a little bit more or organic. Um, you can see that, especially in the hands that look like uh, a regular human hand uh, with an energy weapon kind of growing out of the arm. Um, but it's, uh, as we went, as we upgraded, so this is the 3055 upgrade. Um, uh, I, I absolutely love this from Matt Plog. Insert hatchet A into head B. <clears throat> um, I think that is just a, a fun little... Uh, Easter egg to put on there uh, but then also uh, this redesign on the arm so it's much more robotic looking hand the energy weapon looks like it's more bolted onto the outside not like in a in a slipshod way but um, more like you know you have two components that you're that you're putting together an arm and then this energy weapon which uh, then definitely carries over to our Ill Clan art. So the energy weapon is now underslung, which we can see in the miniature itself as it's turning around right now. Um, you know, it still kind of has this uh, this shark, uh, monster, mouth-looking kind of visage uh, to the head. And then it still has the hatchet on the arm. Unfortunately, we no longer have the insert hatchet A into head B uh, art. But, you know, not everybody is as funny as other artists. So there you go. Uh, but overall, I think they, uh, they do a decent job of translating this piece of art into the miniature. I did find it interesting. Um, normally, the miniatures, they are... Uh, they're for the first piece 
they're usually recreating the art that we've seen for Ill Clan. And in this one, instead of the arm up, it went with the arm down. Um, the legs are definitely definitely differently posed. Um, the the miniature itself looks like it's advancing, uh, whereas the original piece of art seems like it's taking a position to uh, fire on its target. Um, overall, I'm being really nitpicky on this piece of art. It's uh, I think it's a good translation of the miniature into uh, into art form or art into miniature form i should say um uh, and it's a it's a good looking mech that you know let's be honest there's not enough melee weapons in BattleTech, and uh you know as we've seen from the video games melee combat is really the strength of battle tech sorry i couldn't resist but uh <laughs> anyways it still is a, a nice mech it's nice to see them uh, expanding the range of available miniatures beyond just doing Kickstarters. Uh, by the time this video comes up, the Battletech or the Mercenaries Kickstarter will already be done, so we will be getting a bunch of new miniatures. But it is still nice to see that they're releasing new packs, new miniatures, um, you know, and continuing to grow the line of these figures. So. Uh, overall, uh, this is this is a solid set. They're like they're mechs that I like. The Griffin uh, and the Crusader, uh, getting something new with the Night Sky and the Wolfhound. Again, not the most fancy of mechs, but I do think it's it fits a nice niche of being able to be a, a representation of most any BattleTech figure. You've got an energy weapon in the arm, you've got a regular hand in the other, and you've got, you know, it's, it's just an average looking robot. So overall, this is a really solid set. I do wish it was available in retail, but with the way that Catalyst has been releasing these sets, I do think it will be available at some point, um, and they will rotate in uh, new miniature packs, new exclusives at all sorts of different retail locations. So... With that said, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Um, I've been having an absolute blast doing these. Battletech is one of my long-standing favorite games. And so if you enjoy that kind of content, while it's not every week, um, it does come up in rotation quite frequently. So I hope you'll join us. But other than that, um, we do have a couple of links for social media down below. Uh, I also have a link to Drive Through RPG. If you like your source books in PDF format, I would appreciate if you'd use that. Uh, it does give a little bit of a kickback to the channel without charging you any extra, uh, but it does allow me to get additional books for review um, and you know providing additional content. So thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate your time. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.